For the following exercises, use the function values for f and g shown in table 4 to evaluate the expressions. Okay, so we have one table and we got six different problems that we got to do. Whew. But don't worry, they are super easy. Okay, the first thing is, is that we've done tons of problems with this type of notation. We should know that these are composite functions, and we should know that Christina does not like to use this type of notation. I think it's harder than the other one. So anytime that I see this type of notation, I always change it. Memorize this. This notation that they gave you always equals the other composite function notation with the parentheses inside the parentheses. So just know that the one that they gave you first is the outer function, outer, and the g that is stated next is the inner function. So I'm going to just write each one out into the other notation and take it from there. So for the first one, it says f composed with g at 1. However, I'm just going to turn it into f of g of 1. And now I can work with this. This is much easier than looking at these. Now, tips and tricks off of that. Whenever you need to work with a graph with composite functions, you need to find where the x value is, which is going to be a number, on the inner function. Remember, with composite functions, we always work from inner to outer. So there's two functions here. There's an f function and a g function. Which one is the inner function? Meaning, which one is the one that's most inside the parentheses? If you said the g function, you are absolutely correct. So take it from there. The uh, inside function is g of 1. So I'm going to write down g of 1. That's the first thing that you do. The x value is the number that is always inside the parentheses. The answer that you're solving for is always going to be the y value. So now we know for this one that x is equal to 1. The x column gave me a 1 right here. Now I need to figure out what the corresponding y value is for the inner function. They told me that it was a g function. So there's two letters here. There's an f and a g, right? f of x and g of x and anything of x is a fancy way of just saying the y values. So this row are the corresponding y values for the f of x function. This row is the corresponding y values for the g of x function. So from the 1x, right, the x that was a 1 right over here, I got to go down to the g function, not the f function, the g function, and use that as my y. So I know that this first answer is 0. Now I'm ready to do the outer function. The outer function was the f function. But now what? f of what? Well, use that new value that you just found out for the x on the outer function and figure out what the y is. So I'm going to take that 0 and plug it in. And now this is your new x value. OK, well, the x is now 0. They told me it's an f function. So I just go down to the f. And that was a 5. And that is the answer to the first one. So it's all like piggybacking off of each other. You got to find the first answer to use it for the second one. Let's move across. Let's do f composed with g at 2. I'm going to switch it into the other notation that I prefer because I think it's just much easier. It would be f of g of 2. And now you can clearly see who's the inner function and who's the outer function. The inner function is the g of 2. So g of 2 equals this. This is your x value. So x is 2. It's a g. So I got to go all the way down to g. And it would be a negative 3. Now I use that for my outer function. My outer function was the f function. f of negative 3. You use the answer from before. Negative 3 is over here. Go down to the f function. It would be 11. 
And that's your answer here. I think you guys are getting the hang of it. What do you think? Next one, I'm going to put it into the other notation. So this would be g of f of 2. Inner function, f of 2. So I'm going to just write it below here now. f of 2, this is your x value. 2 on the x, they told us for an f. So that's this guy. It equals 1. Now we go to the outer function, which was g. g of 1, because you use the answer from before. So now we're 1 on the x. And you got to go all the way down to g, which is 0. And that's the answer to the third part. Halfway there. We got this. Switch the notation. This is the same thing as saying g of f of 3. Inner function now is clearly f of 3. So f of 3, this is the x value. 3 on the x is all the way over here. We got to go down to the f. It's a negative 1. Use that number to plug in for the outer function, which was the g function. g of negative 1. Use that answer. That's the new x. Negative 1. You got to go all the way down to the g, which is 0. And that is the answer. Let me erase this. Next one. g composed with g at 1. Same thing as g of g of 1. Inner function now is clearly g of 1. g of 1. This is the x value that you're searching for. The x is 1. They told you it's a g function, so you got to go all the way down, and that outputs a 0. The outer function is another g, so g of, use that answer, 0. And that's the new x value. So now you go to 0. It's a G, so you got to go all the way down, and that is a 1. Last one. F composed with F at 3. I'm going to switch it. It's F of F of 3. Inner function now is clearly F of 3. This is your X value. And let me just erase this. So your x value is a 3, drop down to the f, negative 1, ooh, negative 1. Outer function is again an f, but use the answer that you got. This would be f of negative 1. So my new x value, right, this is my new x value. My new x value was a negative 1. It's an f function, so you go down to the f, and it turns out that it's a 7. And that is it. What do you think, guys? This was fun. You guys are getting to be masters at graphs. We also did tons of questions. Oh, sorry. You're being masters at tables. We also did tons of questions with graphs, figuring out how to work the graph. So if you haven't tried that out already and you need to know it for your class, definitely check those out. All right, it's in the playlist in this composition of functions playlist. Okay, so thank you so much. Hit the like button if this helped you. If you want to subscribe to the channel and hear my voice, <laughs> you can click the subscribe button. Thank you so much for the support. Um, and yeah, tell your friends. Tell anybody who you think that's, you know, in math, pre-calc, algebra, trig, geometry, we're doing it all. So everybody will benefit from it. And yeah, I'll see you in the next lesson. Have a great day. Bye-bye.